Hey guys, uh, I'm gonna make a quick video about the HCAST VCAM. Uh, I've been working this, or I started working on this, and I, I had a couple people ask me about it and what it does and what comes in the box and this and that. So we're gonna make a little video on those topics. Uh, we're gonna go from what's in the box uh, to how it fits in the car, why it works, where it came from, and why other engines do and don't use it. So let's start with what's in the box. Uh, the first thing you're going to get is a whole new valve cover for your intake side. The purpose, the purpose of this is to allow oil to be fed to the cam via this solenoid. And that is actually how the cam is controlled. And it is fully variable using this sensor. That sensor actually allows the ECU or that you're using, or the system that it comes with. I normally don't use this, but it does come with a module that will control it for you. Uh, it tells it in what position the cam is relative to where uh, zero is, and it actually gives you a number on where your valve timing is at, which is really cool. And later on in the video, I'll actually uh, show you how that affects how the engine runs. Uh, so let's keep going with what's in the box. We do get our cam. The cam is specific. It's a rifle cam, oil goes through feeds our actual sprocket. This is the piece that actually sees oil pressure and then uh, is regulated by that oil pressure to give us the different variances in timing. Uh, we do get a fresh valve cover gasket and this is the hardware kit. Uh, I don't want to get too into detail with it. We might just do like an install video on it later, but essentially these are the pieces that lets us actually make the whole system work. Um, a lot of it, some of like the oil tees and stuff I don't use, I just make custom lines just for the sake of making it look nice. I have a couple here in stock, and I'm probably, I think we're working on about three right now. We're doing for customers, and there's the old box. So that's what it looks like when you open the box, take everything out. But you also do get instructions, they come in Japanese and English. Uh, you have to follow them. If you don't follow them, you risk potentially damaging the engine. Uh, the step one, I believe, has been proven to work with the factory pistons. This is a step two. I don't think it does. I've never done one, um, I, but I always follow the instructions and take all the correct measurements to ensure that I will not have any issues. So if you measure tw twice, cut once shouldn't have any problems. Uh, over here we have a dyno sheet. This is actually the dyno sheet for this R33. Uh, when we were done tuning, uh, decided to make a quick comparison with literally shutting the V-cam off as if it wasn't there and then turning it back on. Uh, you can see this dynograph down here. These two, I don't have a, uh, this is an inject printer, not a color printer, so it didn't show up in color, but essentially these two thicker lines here are our V-cam less run and then these thinner lines up here are horsepower and torque uh, with VCAM. You can see what a huge difference is made right here. I mean, up top we made uh, pretty pretty similar power, but man, did we make a ton more power down low. I think the best is about right at about 5,000 or 800 RPM, where I think that's almost 100 foot-pounds of torque difference. So that's pretty substantial, especially when you have a large turbo like this. Um, and uh, to give you a little bit more info on that, the reason we made so much more torque in that area is the turbo, this T-51R, actually came in about 400 RPM faster, which is, again, pretty, pretty amazing. So obviously what this does is it controls the intake cam. This is an RB25neo, uh, which had a kind of a similar system. This worked on an on and off principle, so essentially the ECU would just turn it on and off to regulate a predefined amount of degrees. Nissan was using this technology uh, around the same time that the RB26 were created in the RB25, 25 Neo, and the VG30, along with, I think the SR, well not I think, I know the SR came with it later on, and the S14, and the S15 platform. So this is a 2J GTE. They did not utilize it, but then they got smart, and they actually started using it in the VVTI. So the 1J and 2J did come with a variable valve uh, option, which uh, makes a tremendous difference in how it delivers power, especially when you start putting big turbos on. So I guess that's about it. Um, this is what you get in the box. This is the performance results. And these are examples of it all well, installed in a car. And that's what it, looked like, what it would have looked like if uh, uh, Nissan had offered it from the factory. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm only making more videos, just instructional videos on stuff like this, what's in the box, how to do this, how it works, stuff like that. 
Um, if you need to contact me with any questions, feel free to go to ravperformance.com. Contact me. I'm pretty easy to talk to and I can fill you in any information. If you're looking for any parts like the VCAM, I'm keeping pretty much anything to build the Skyline in stock, including these. I usually have one, at least one or two in stock and I can get them out uh, same day, depending on what time they order. So appreciate you guys. Have a good one.